It's day two of the Freestyle Chess Goat Challenge. That's uh, Fisher Random Chess to you and me. You can see the, the baseline has been shuffled. And if you want to understand positional chess, then it's always good to look at the games of Magnus Carlsen. And that's what we're going to do here. So Nodibek Abdusatorov, 19 years old from Uzbekistan, an absolute superstar already, against Magnus Carlsen playing black. Now, this was played in the final round of the preliminary all-play-all. -all. More on that in a second, but let's look at this game. F4 looks like a very logical start. So the pawn is supported by the rook, but it starts the task of opening up the position for the bishop. Certainly this one comes into play. Seems clear that bringing the bishops and the queen into the game that's really important. Carlson does the same. Opens up the diagonal. And second bishop comes into play. Symmetrical position so far. And now Abdus Satorov starts the process of activating the queen. A4. So he gains some territory. And that's supported by the queen. I guess Carlson could match it. But instead he played knight f6. At a5, Abdus Satorov gains territory. Bishop d5, very logical move. That bishop in the corner was striking across the board, so why not exchange it off? But Abdus Satorov doesn't want that. He plays knight f3. b5, so Carlsen finds another way to bring the queen into the game. So the queen obviously has influence over that long diagonal. And Abdul -Sator Satorov decides to exchange en passant. Now, I find Carlson's next move really hard to understand. If he just recaptures with the pawn, well, in all likelihood we're going to get an exchange of queens and it looks about equal. I guess Carlson was just wanting to keep more tension in the position. But positionally that's dubious. Because you can see that black has two pawn islands. There's one pawn island and there's the other pawn island. Whereas white has one pawn island. Now it doesn't look significant at the moment. But those pawns are potentially vulnerable. Particularly with that bishop here actually. It's hard for them to move. Now it doesn't seem significant. But let's see what happens. So first of all knight c3 attacks the bishop. Which drops back. Now, I really like Abdusatorov's next move. Queen a2. So the queen is already looking down the a-file. It prepares to double on the a-file. But also it looks down at a really important diagonal as well. And you have to say, well, whose queen is better here? Definitely white. So, so far, looking good for Abdusatorov. Queen b7 and rook a1. And that's already very uncomfortable for black. The pawn on a7 is threatened. So what do you do about it? Well, you've got to move it. But after you play a6, look. The b6 pawn is sensitive. That a6 pawn is guarded by the knight. But that's not really what you want the knight doing. It's so passive. Knight a4, attacking pawn on b6, and if it advances, then knight c5 doesn't look very nice for, for black. So bishop takes knight. Well, Abdusatorov already has the advantage of the two bishops against bishop and knight. Those two bishops are absolutely beautiful. And this one? In the corner just can't be exchanged off. Black doesn't have a light square bishop. But the other one as well also looks fantastic, pointing at b6. So b5, I think, you know, Carlson has to do something about those pawns. They can't live there. So queen a5 check. And king e8. So black can no longer castle. Yeah, the funny thing is, white can still castle in this position, if he wants to. Well, 
it would be nice if the knight could move unmasking the bishop but at the moment that bishop is unprotected so Abdu Satorov plays bishop e4 so now the bishop is protected and moves like knight e5 or some discovered attack come into play so therefore knight e4 so the bishops exchanged d3 and the knight goes back again so Carlson has achieved something there you know it's probably quite nice to exchange one pair of bishops however Abdusatorov has complete control in this position look at the queen and rook bearing down on the pawn here the knight can't move it's interesting um, there's no need to castle here you know you could you could put the queen the, the king on g1 but actually the king is beautifully placed here protecting the pawn on c2 and it has this sort of central shell that gives gives the king perfect protection knight d4 unmasking an attack on the queen queen c7 exchange of queens and this is an this is a dream position for white because there are no weaknesses in white's position absolutely no weaknesses king there connects the rooks so what can black attack here nothing whereas that is a target so this is just basically a free roll for abu satorov you know he would be having fun here and generally he's a very responsible player you know he plays positional chess beautifully so how do you make progress here with white how do you increase the pressure on black's position well he finds a very nice maneuver c3 what's that about well it's to create a square for the knight which bounces round to attack the pawn on a6 so let's see that and there's nothing that black can do about this in the meantime rook a5 preparing rook to a1 hitting the pawn knight c6 well at least carlson has managed to get rid of this bishop so bishop takes knight so that's to maintain the position of the rook on a5 knight b4 king here rook a1 and knight takes a6 it's not so clear if white exchanges off all the rooks because black does get some counterplay there but knight takes a6 is safe there's a pin at the moment but actually white uh, can get clear with moves like this let, let me just demonstrate so basically in this position carlson played knight g4 but let's just see what happens if black waits for example like this okay c4 c5 check king goes back can't go to d7 because there'd be a check there so king e7 and knight b4 there's the trick if rook takes then knight c6 and you win the rook back and win a pawn so here we go knight g4 so carlson decides right he has to do something has to find something to attack so he moves in with the knight attacking this one h4 and that's the trick knight h1 wants to win this pawn so basically this forces abdusatorov to exchange pieces not that this is terrible but carlson at least has been able to exchange off the knights yes white is a clear pawn up but in rook and pawn end games that's your best chance of a draw nevertheless this is a clear extra pawn and the the nightmare continues for carlson i mean this is an absolute dream position because it's a completely regular pawn structure extra pawn you advance here then the rook can enter into the position it's really it's it should this is a technical win basically pawn takes pawn rook takes and rook a2 carlson looking for counterplay and that's snuffed out with king c2 
King's in the perfect position. Rook comes back to protect the pawn. And e4. White creeps forward. Rook g7. Attacks that one. Which Rook comes back to defend. But that's okay. We can manage that. Carlson looking for counterplay. Okay, what's White's plan here? Well, it's quite clear. The king needs to come over to f3 to support the pawn, and then the rook will be free to attack either on h5 or h6. And then the show rolls on. So king d2. And if black does nothing, then this is completely winning. So c4, Carlson looking to create counterplay. How does this create counterplay? Okay, let's see. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, king e3. That's how. There's now a little weakness here to attack. Not that it's very serious, but let's have a look. King here, king f3. So Abdus Satorov has completed the first phase of the plan. This pawn is guarded, and now the rook is able to come in and attack from either h6 or h5. Still a pawn up, still positionally very good. Rook d7, right, counterplay. This is what Carlson is relying on. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, and rook h5, targeting the pawn. So clearly defending passively just isn't working because of g4, and there's a pin. So rook d3 check, and the king gets pushed around here. Rook takes f5 check. So Abdus Satorov is still a pawn up. However, there have been pawn exchanges. That's good for the defender. And this one is a target. So there's already a threat to collect this pawn like this. So rook e5. Now, if that's just attacked here, then the rook will be able to come back. Therefore, rook d2, rook d2 with the idea, idea that if rook e3, then rook d3. So that's why the king was pushed all the way over here, because the pawn would go through. So this is where Abdus Satorov had to think very carefully. He was a little bit short on time. He has had something like three minutes left. Carlson, I think, had something like eight minutes. So Abdus Satorov did have enough time, but tricky to get it right. He played rook e4. Attacking this one, the king came forward, and rook e7. Rook d3, rook takes h7, rook takes c3. Actually, I think by this stage, Magnus could be pretty happy that he's reached this position, because although white is still a pawn up, Technically, this is difficult to win. Obviously, this pawn is quite far advanced. And it's starting to look a bit tricky. So how do you win this with white? Okay, let's find out. Let's see what Abbas Torov did. King g4. Well, we know that the, the pawns are going to have to advance and... The king is going to have to shield them and protect them and slowly advance down the board. The problem is that white has two to advance. White, uh, black only has one, so it's a bit quicker. Rook here. Yeah, now this is an interesting one because sometimes the rook can check from the side and then come round to shield the pawn. Check. Rook back. f5. So this pawn starts to advance. Of course, if this advances, then rook check. So king c5, and now the rook goes to the back. Again, the rook can get behind the pawn, so black has to be careful. Therefore, rook e4 check. King h5, making room for the g-pawn. Rook e5, stop this one advancing. G4 protects, and King C4. So you can see that Carlsen is playing very cleverly. He wants to shield the king with the rook and then advance. 
white could play like this and then we get a queen and pawn endgame. Now, I think this will be a nightmare to defend. But, you know, there are drawing chances there. I mean, theoretically, it's a win if you check it on the on the uh, database. But still, could be tricky. But Abdusatorov plays in a more secure way. Rook d1. So he's aiming simply to give up the rook. And while the king is way across the other side of the board, he is just advancing the pawns protected by the king. So let's see. Rook e3, g5, just keeping everything together. King d3, f7, threatening to promote. So rook f3 stops that. King g7. King across g6, and that was the final move. Here, Carlson resigned because if king e5, you make a queen, and then the g pawn just rolls through just in time. But of course, Abusatorov had that all worked out way back, you know, around, around about this position, basically. He'd uh, be able to been able to calculate this one through. Well, what a smooth victory. Remember that uh, Nodibek Abisatorov won the World Rapid Play Championship in 2021? Yeah, that's right. World Rapid in 2021. He was 17 years old. So, you know, he's a class act and he showed it um, in this game and throughout the first two days, actually. So you can see how... Carlson c takes b6 created this weakness here and he could he never was was able to surmount uh, get past this weakness actually um but the way Abdusatorov built up slowly first of all getting the two bishops very nice and then you know when we got to a position like this this is the dream position, and this was a really nice idea. C3, creating room for the knight. So that pawn eventually dropped, and again we had you know one of those technical positions which is just so much fun when you have a regular pawn structure and an extra pawn. And Abdusatorov converted brilliantly because you know these kind of positions can still be very tricky, but he handled the final phase perfectly actually really well played now what's happening after the the first two days so the preliminary rapid play all play all is over abisator of five and a half out of seven kaima five caruana four and a half firuz jar four carlson three and a half gukesh three aronian two ding half Poor guy, he's really suffering. I uh, feel very sorry for him. He's obviously not right at all. Um, now, <laughs> I've got the rules right. Um, no one gets eliminated. Basically, that was just to determine the seedings, the pairings for the knockout stage. So we have, as far as I understand it, Abisatorov will play Ding. Kaima will play Aronian. Caruana will play Gukesh. And Firuzja will play Carlsen. So we're moving on into the classical phase. Knockout stage, classical time limit. Now that's going to be very interesting. That's when we're, we're going to really see who plays the best at this uh, Fisher Random or Freestyle Chess. There we go. Thanks for watching.